Okay, we're back, Dr. Wanda J. Evans Brewer and Gia. <laughs> <laughs> it took us a while to do a video. A different time, I've had a few things to talk about, but Gia was out of sync. And now we're both in sync. And we have some good news, some good news, some good news to announce. And what's our good news? We're coming soon. <laughs> we're coming soon. Do you remember what date we're, we're leaving? On the 17th. 17th of September, we have our tickets. We are completely and totally overwhelmed. Because we have to take a COVID test here in order to get on the plane. Then once we get to Ghana, we have to take a COVID test in order to get in the country. They want to see negative, 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 negative. The test is $150 per person. 150, 150, that equals 300. So um, at first I was very angry and frustrated and rah, 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 rah. And then I finally accepted it and I said, well, I see it as just an increased ticket. Let's do what needs to be necessary because Gia wants to what? See my family again. And um, the excitement about that, the anticipation of that, uh, this trip is completely, I would say 90% of this trip is for Gia. Gia is anxiously awaiting to get back to Ghana, be with her friends, be with her family in Ghana. Gia, why don't you share some of your thoughts around that? Well, I'm excited to be going back to Ghana to see my family because it's like it's been like a whole full, like, like a million years without a million. <laughs> yes. And I just miss seeing and waking up to them and just playing with them every five seconds and going to school and seeing all my other mm -hmm. friends and seeing my teachers and greeting them and everything. I miss it all. And I just really look forward to it. Not only that, but we're not just coming with stuff always for people now. Because mm -hmm. last time that did not go well. Well, it wasn't that we was coming with stuff for people. I, I hosted a health fair. Yeah. Um, and then also I hosted, it was a tour and a health fair. So each stop of that, there was various artifacts and things that were needed. You know, everything from, um, you know, care packages to just equipment. And yeah, we ended up packing suitcases that was filled with things for others. And then once all these major events was over, we realized we didn't have enough. For us. Yeah, we didn't have enough clothes. We didn't have enough accessories. There was a whole bunch of stuff that we was missing that actually um, gives your life, you know, continuity and joy and makes things just kind of flow easy. So this time we made sure we started the packing with us. And so, in fact, I spent a big chunk of this day kind of going through putting together suitcases. Now, you know, as much as I said I wasn't going to bring things for other people. Uh, yeah. yeah, we packed quite a few things for other people. But I would say 75% of the suitcases is filled with stuff for Gia and myself. So this should be a much better, better yeah, much better visit. Because we, we had even forgot underwear, okay? That's when you know. It's a, uh -uh. <laughs> I even got offered to wear a bag. I was shocked. I was shocked. I've never heard, and listen, I grew up in poverty, you know, and I I, I get it. I, I get the, but to wear, put on a bag? Who wears a bag? You just go commando. You just don't wear nothing, but you're not, <laughs> I'm not going outside and, and, and then the crunch. You're going to hear this crunch or, no, it's horrible. What did you say when, they, when you was, at, that was suggested to you? Well, my cousin Priscilla, she said, um, yeah, we ain't got nothing else. Mm. Either we could go look for a fresh bag for you, mm. or we could go look someplace else, but we don't have the money right now and stuff like that. And I'm mm -hmm. like, no, I'd rather just go with nothing. And why didn't you call me? Why didn't you, you knew you was over to your family, so why didn't you say, call my mom? Um, she'll she'll do something. She'll wire or something. Why didn't you call? Susie me? wasn't there at the time. Oh, so you didn't have another an adult. Okay, well, that's rough. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, um, 
Gia is in school here. She's online at her school, um, the American School, Emerson. And that has taken on its own rhythm. So I'm very satisfied with the fact that they gave us a laptop. They gave some workbooks, which we'll travel with. But she's been doing her online learning. And I'm going to, this time around, I want her to stick with that because in Africa, the schools close out around December, whereas in America, we're starting in August, late, in, in, in late August, early September, and then schools close out for us in June. So I don't want her whole, because um, now she's 10 in fifth grade, I don't want her just disconnected from structure and the academic setting and thinking about different skill sets because it's easy for um, Gia to get distracted and, and get kind of lazy and, and not want to do those things. And I just, I personally as a parent don't want it. So I'm hoping that I can blend her with the two, the two schools. So she'll, she'll do still meet at the appropriate time in order to do the activities and the artifacts and submit and engage there. But then she'll also have time with um, her friends in Ghana and, and do the things that's needed there. What's your thoughts on that? I see it good because it would be nice for, like, if somebody was sitting next to me, like one of my family members was sitting right next to me, they would see what it's like. Oh, for they that, that, e, how that the, e school. Yeah, they mm -hmm. would see how the computer is like, what you do, how you mm -hmm. use the mouse and everything like that. They would see how to get to the Zoom class and everything. Mm. That would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes it's just like, I think about it like, it would be nice if I could ever just take America with take, you and take America and Ghana and just smash them all together and just mix it up like a pot. Oh, like, you're such a greedy young lady. Because <laughs> I mean, I'm leaving my friends here to go to my family there. Well, and then when you, I leave you my are, but the truth is you're not able to engage with your friends here. No, I'm really And that's not. part of why we're... Well, at least the urgency with me was like, I'm looking at just the loneliness, the everyday, and we're in a good place in our house. So it's just me and her grandmother that she's engaging with. But she, I said, my baby turned 10 July 16th, and this is, uh, so I want her to be able to enjoy just regular life, the regular adolescent engagement, as opposed to just this mundane COVID quarantine-ish life because even when we're not stuck in the house it's still just not anything going on that I can take her to and she can really be just joyous and stimulated so I said no I want to give her back life life that's that's full of adventure and joy and and where she can have some fun with other folks besides uh, a 53 year old lady and a 78 year old lady <laughs> like there hardly is any kids on this block. There's no kids and on the, this like, block. The two kids I met, it's a great I've block, already though. like halfway left, and I'm like, there's. And that was maybe this wasn't their block. This was them like coming just to visiting. visit a relative. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that that's also it. Um, yeah, you know, I, I I decided this time it had to be very sacrificial for Gia. I had to get her back to her family and friends. You know, the country, the world will not give the respect that it should give to Africa. Africa has low percentages of COVID cases. I mean, if you look at all 54 nations, COVID is everywhere. We will catch it. But the recovery rate for Africans has been, you know, tremendous. So um, we've been taking our bitters. We have we've fallen off our bitters. We haven't had bitters in like maybe three or four weeks. But I've stayed consistent with the Irish sea moss. And then we've been on, you know, a, a really, really good diet in general where um, we started fasting and the fasting brought in a lot of self-control and a little bit more of, um, and we didn't start fasting for any sort of weight loss methods, but just to really just kind of keep our spirits nice and strong. And that's part of building that immune system too. When you're depressed and, and when you're stressed, that lowers it as well. So the fasting has, has actually strengthened us in a lot of ways. So yeah. So um, September 17th, we're getting on a plane. Um, it leaves at 6 o'clock. We were supposed to be at the airport at least by 3. I probably would be there around 2.30 because I don't know what what's going what this whole 
you know, walking through the pro COVID, COVID experience is going to be like. So I want to make sure these suitcases get in and what they weigh and all that stuff that goes with that. But yes, we're returning home to Ghana. I plan to be in Ghana for um, a month and then I'm going to travel alone to Tanzania because I just don't have the resources to take Gia with me. And I know the Tanzanian family wants to see her as well. They haven't seen her um, in a few years now. But the reality is, as much as people ache to see her, the only person that pays for this stuff is me. So I know my limitations, and uh, but I also know my desires. Gia is a Ghanaian at heart. She loves, loves, loves Ghana. Um, I am still very much attached to East Africa. I love Tanzania, and I've um, started the process of building a roundhouse there, and my house is almost done, so I want time to enjoy that. See my cows, see my chickens. Okay, now you're getting started. Um, one thing I really just like, why Ghana is like my country and my hometown mm -hmm. and everything like that to me, is I look back at this video of this interview with two of, um, two set of twins. Mm. And I look at my action, I'm like, Wait a minute, that was me? That yes. didn't even sound like me. Yes. And I got back and all my friends were like, you have an accent, you have an accent. I'm like, I don't have an accent. Because oh, <laughs> I couldn't hear it through my ears. But I thought I was speaking perfect English. You but they're was, like, as a Ghanaian. But they... <laughs> <laughs> And they were like, no, you don't say it like that. You say it like this. And I'm like, I say it my way. <laughs> And it was just kind of frustrating. Then when I finally got back, like, what, like, three or, like, four of the weeks, I was like... When you finally heard it on that video. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it was very strong. Remember, um, Ghana Man said he, that he liked it. He said, I like the way you talk better than your mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's our big announcement. We are headed back to Ghana. <laughs> um... We, yeah, we look forward to returning one to tell you that. So people who are going, just know uh, 150 COVID tests, individual, got to pay it going in, got to pay it going out. So there's a huge sacrifice to make going to Ghana. Uh, but I won't tell you it's not worth it. I look forward to all my family and friends there as well. They know as much as I, I talk about East Africa, they know I love them very much as well. So we're signing off. Do you want to say anything before we go? Yep. Um... Stay grateful and positive. Bye.